Good afternoon, everybody. I am Colonel Bikram Bardwaj from Department of Ops and Gaini FMC Pune. Today, we'll be having a talk on preoperative serum albumin levels as marker of postoperative complications in ovarian masses, which were referred to a tertiary institute with suspicion of malignancy. We will be discussing this topic under the following ads. Introduction, material methods, results, discussion, limitations, and conclusion. To begin with, as we all know that surgery is one of the mainstay of treatment modality in ovarian masses suspicious of malignancy. Extensive surgery is always at, associated with adverse events and major post-operative morbidity to, to the tune of 30 to 60 percent. And surgical stress during a major surgery does have an impact on the final outcome of the surgery. Preoperative nutritional status of the patient is a critical factor which has a bearing on clinical outcome, including infection as well as the surgical efficacy. Albumin, we all know, is one of the main plasma proteins in the human body, which comprises around 60% of the total proteins. And low pre-op albumin levels, they indicate inflammatory process and they are a marker of post-operative complications and survival, especially in cancer patients. Degree of malnutrition can be quantified by pre-op serum albumin levels in patients who are scheduled for cancer surgery. Malnutrition occurs to the tune of 20% in gynae patients with maximum incidence in ovarian cancer patients. So the present study aims to evaluate the role of pre-op serum albumin levels as marker of post-op complications in patients undergoing surgery for ovarian masses suspicious of malignancy. Material methods, it was a prospective study of around 40 patients who were treated by a gynec onco unit of Gujarat Cancer and Research Institute, Ahmedabad. All patients underwent upfront surgery for ovarian masses with suspicion of malignancy. Aim was to evaluate the role of pre-op serum albumin levels as marker of post-op complications in these patients who underwent surgery during the duration Jan 2016 to August 2016. Inclusion criteria, they were all clinically mobile ovarian masses with pre-op serum CA125 levels less than 500, ascites less than 500 ml, and imaging not showing any involvement of vital structures in the form of bowel and bladder. There was no disease in upper abdomen in almost all the patients and peritoneal thickening less than 4 mm on CT scan. Serum albumin were, levels were done on day three and day five in the post-op period along with the pre-op evaluation. Surgery was performed by an expert team of gynec onco surgeons. Serum albumin levels between 3.5 to 5 milligram, they were considered as normal and hypoalbuminemia was defined as any levels which were less than 3.5 milligram per deciliter. Post-op complications were noted until the patients were discharged from the hospital or post-operative death occurred during the hospital stay. And complications, they were classified as per as the clavian dendo classification. If we go with the results, the patient profile, the total number of patients in this study were around 40, with a mean age of around 39.5 years. 23 patients, that is roughly 57%, they belong to urban background, and 80% of them were vegetarian patients. Four patients, they were unmarried. So far as the menstrual status of these patients is concerned, one patient was premenarchal. Majority of them were premenopausal, 27 patients, and around 30% population was postmenopausal. 80% population was vegetarian. Comorbidities in the form of diabetes, hypertension, and hypothyroidism, they were present in 2, 6, and 2 patients. At ascites, more than 500 ml was present in around four patients and less than 500 ml in eight cases. There were around 12 patients who had CA125 levels less than 35. And pre-op albumin levels below the normal of less than uh, of 3.5 milligram was seen in around 30%. However, 70% had values more than 3.5 milligram. Now, if we come to the histology of these ovarian masses, out of 40 patients, 24 patients had malignancy in the final histopath. And out of these 24 patients, 
we were able to achieve r0 resection in 20 cases four patients had advanced disease and r1 resection was done now coming to malignant tumors nine patients had cyst adenocarcinoma three had mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma four had fibroma and thicoma and the four cases of adult granulosa cell tumor if we analyze the complications two patients in the first category had grade 1 complication in the form of fever with discharge and there were two patients who required blood transfusion in the immediate post op in mucinous category there was one patient who had post operative wound discharge in the sex cord stromal variety there were two patients who had grade 3a complications in the form of minor wound gaps which were sutured under local anesthesia and there was one patient who required post operative blood transfusion so far as the granulosa cell tumor variety there was a major complication in the form of burst abdomen with sepsis in two patients and there was one patient who required post operative transfusion coming to the benign variety total eight patients three had serous cyst adenoma five had mucinous cyst adenoma post operative fever was seen in two patients and minor wound gaps which were resutured under local anesthesia in two patients now the third variety that is the pseudo tumors we had three sub categories endometriosis five cases one or <clears throat> two of these patients landed with grade one complications in the form of wound discharge tuberculosis two patients no complications third is xanthogranulomatous oophoritis there was one case and this patient required blood transfusion making it grade two complication now if we see the association of preop albumin levels mean preoperative albumin was 3.56 in this study and day 3 and day 5 albumin levels were 3.24 and 3.42 respectively 30% patients in the preop period had levels less than 3.5 and there were eight patients who had falling serum albumin levels in the post op period out of these eight patients three had a benign disease four had malignancy and one had a pseudo tumor of ovary all pa eight patients with this falling albumin levels they had a prolonged hospital stay and their morbidity was increased now coming to the discussion we all know that malnutrition is very frequently seen in chronic diseases and is usually associated with adverse outcomes 20% of patients with ovarian masses they die of malnutrition rather than the disease itself and albumin is a major parameter which is used in clinical studies to measure long standing malnutrition tenatoetal they define nutritional status in patients with ovarian cancer as adequate versus poor on the basis of pre op serum albumin levels during the preceding 3 to 4 months and serum albumin was the main kinetic marker which was a response marker for surgical stress and predictive of adverse post operative outcomes in our present study preoperative low albumin is a independent marker not only for post op complications but for even the overall survival of such patients in the present study low serum albumin was associated with four times more incidence of mild complications that is post operative fever anemia and wound discharge compared to normal albumin levels and similarly severe complications in the form of sepsis and burst abdomen was even four times more common compared to normal albumin levels patients who had falling trends of albumin in the post op period tend to had more complications longer hospital stay and more chances of resuturing study by oppal et al supported the fact that low albumin has six times more severe complications and they are more likely to die within the first 30 days of surgery similarly obermeier et al also reiterated the rise of complications in the form of wound complications septicemia and anastomotic leaks more in patients with low albumin levels vantabe et al demonstrated correlation between rapid turnover protein levels and inflammation related markers in ovarian cancer patients ESPN 10 recommended parenteral and enteral support for 5 to 10 days in such undernourished patients prior to surgery. In ovarian cancer, Gisler et al showed an improvement of serum pre-albumin level with preoperative TPN. With regards to operative morbidity, albumin levels are a better prognostic marker than the anthropometric markers. So hypoalbuminemia has been proved to be an independent negative prognostic factor. for overall survival and has been reported in various other cancers like breast cancer gastric and colorectal cancers 
patients with albumin level less than 2.5 showed impaired median survival of 4.8 months compared to those with levels more than 3.5 with a median survival of 43 months martin et al revealed falling albumin levels less than 2 mg in post op period are associated with increased morbidity longer icu stay and even higher reoperation rates now coming to the limitations the main limitation was the small size only 40 patients in this study and another limitation was the optimal cut off values for low serum albumin levels which still remains unclear to conclude hypoalbuminemia is a risk factor for post op complications in patients with ovarian masses falling levels of serum albumin in post operative period has a bearing on the final outcome final falling serum levels they indicate magnitude of surgical stress which has a positive impact on post operative complications three patients with malignant histology had severe complications like burst abdomen sepsis and thrombus in one of the major vessels which affected the final outcome so serum albumin is relatively a low cost test which should be utilized more frequently as a prognostic tool to detect malnutrition and risk of adverse surgical outcomes the impact of pre op nutrition in patients suffering from malnutrition and its impact on post op outcome as well as prognosis in patients with primary ovarian tumor needs to be further elucidated thank you